Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or Aminar Productions and welcome to my review of the Lego Star Wars Summer 2020 Death Star Final Duel set number 75291. Lego did send me this set for free to review for you guys on the channel, so thank you very much to LEGO for doing that. Anyway, this set has 775 pieces and in the United States costs $100. It has five figures with Luke Skywalker, a Darth Vader with now printed arms, Emperor Palpatine, and a couple of Imperial Royal Guards, all of whom we'll take a look at momentarily. This set is actually a remake that is very close to a re-release, and it's kind of an interesting concept that LEGO is kind of trying out here, in my opinion, that we could see in the future with more more sets of them taking a build and basically re-releasing it but with minor changes upgrades and things like that to both the minifigs and the build and I think that is an excellent excellent thing that we could perhaps see once a year going forward not sure if that's going to happen just wild speculation and thoughts in my head but that's just kind of what I see with something like this but this is a re-release slash remake of the 2015 version of the Death Star Final Duel obviously draws a lot of inspiration from that set with a $20 price bump and about a 50 piece increase. I feel like it could be worth that price change. I'll be doing a comparison video on those two sets, so I'll have that link down below when it's available. But the back of this box shows off the set in a different uh, orientation here, and you can just see all the little features shown off in their little respective boxes. And there's a little advertisement to play this in the LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga video game whenever that releases. So very neat looking set. I think that this is going to be an interesting one to get into. This is how the set comes out of the box with its six numbered bags, instructions within its own sleeve, also containing the sticker sheet, and then this one plate piece on its own, not in any of the bags for whatever reason. Sometimes LEGO just does this with random pieces and this is the random piece that didn't make its way into a bag. Here's the very spiffy looking Luke Skywalker. Got a nice new torso print on there with plenty of detailing. You'll find the same thing around back with some nice lining on the shirt basically to show all the wrinkles and whatnot. And even a little pouch there on his I guess I assume it's a belt that's kind of running along the shirt there. Very nice. He's got one black hand and one regular flesh hand to symbolize the hand that is kind of like robotic. And then he's got his green lightsaber. The hairpiece may be the most off-putting thing about this figure because it's just so old at this point and it doesn't cover up the backside of that second face. It's kind of a shame that that is showing through, but it is still nice, of course, that you do get a second face. And underneath, that's what that's going to look like. He's got a nice little smirk to him on that one versus a more stern look around here. There's also a pair of handcuffs in the set that you can use to apprehend Luke and bring him into the throne room with. Nice touch. This is perhaps the most accurate Darth Vader we have ever gotten from Lego here, and it's really good looking. Some people don't like the newer style helmet that they introduced in 2015, and I'm kind of in that camp, but I do think it looks much more accurate than the version that they had from 1999 that they were using until that point. So it definitely was an upgrade and still looks good to this day, in my opinion. He's got his red lightsaber. The torso printing is incredible, like so detailed, so accurate. But I think the biggest pull for this figure and why people may buy this set just for this figure, not that it is a really good looking Darth Vader, so that arm printing. This Darth Vader has arm printing. It's something we've never seen on a Darth Vader figure before. It looks incredible. It's such a nice addition compared to other versions. And I hope they never go back. I hope arm printing is a mainstay on every Darth Vader figure going forward. I would hate for them to do it just this one time and then be like, okay, now we're gonna cheap out and give you not the best that we can make. So that would be a shame, but that's kind of where I'm at on that. The back print looks nice as well, even though it's mostly gonna be hidden by this very nice soft cape, kind of the newer cape style that they introduced a few years back as well. The helmet is the two piece, so you can pull off the top half reveal Darth Vader's head, which looks like Darth Vader's head in Lego. We've seen it before. Nothing crazy new or different about that. This set also sees Emperor Palpatine for the first time with the newer hood piece that they introduced, I believe, in 2019. He does have that softer cape, much like Darth Vader. There is no back print on him, notably. But, you know, again, like I said with Vader, it's covered most of the time. Is it that important to have there? He's got his lightning pieces coming out of his hands, which is great. And he actually does also include, like, his gold lightsaber hilt with a red blade. So that's there for him, too, if you want to get him in on the action with Vader and Luke. Got a great torso, waist, and leg print that's very continuous going all the way down there. Always love seeing that. And the newer hood piece, you know, some people don't like it, some people like it. I don't know why, but I'm just not a huge fan of the way it looks. Removing it reveals his head print much better there. So wrinkly, so decrepit looking, wonderful. And then the backside, he actually does have a second, much angrier looking face. I love that they gave him an actual, like, really evil look. And to round out the five minifigures, you get a pair of Emperor's Royal Guards. We've seen these guys before. They 
they look great. Like Lego really has nailed the look and there's not really much that they can add at this point in 2020. I love the helmet mold that they've had for these guys all these years. It's just like perfect. It was perfect from the beginning when they first introduced these characters and no real complaints about this figure. You'll find a black head underneath. Very nostalgic to me to get black heads on minifigures. I actually have something to say about the cape though. You can see it's a lighter red color on the outside and it's a darker red color on the inside. So that's just a really nice touch for Lego to have on this fig. And this is the Death Star 2's build, or really the throne room in all of its glory here. It does look pretty good in its more compact form here, but it does have another form, which is actually what you kind of see on the box where it's all opened up. And I'll get to that. And there's some actually really neat and unique play features that we've never seen on a Death Star Duel that is in this set that I really do want to take a look at and try out because there are some fun ones. We'll, we'll get to that. But you actually have a nice space here at the very front of the set. And this whole doorway has some nice space out the front of it where you can actually place a couple of your Royal Guards here to guard the doorway. And then maybe you could have Luke with handcuffs kind of trying to walk through the door with maybe Darth Vader coming in behind him to escort him in type of thing. There's some nice play like that that you can definitely have with this set, especially for kids. The doors look really nice. However, there is one fault with them and that's that they don't really close the gap all the way. So you can see if I push in on these pieces here, you can get them to line up flush, but usually they're just slightly off and there's a slight gap there. And it, I don't know, something is wrong with them and it's not perfectly designed. Obviously everything doesn't have to be perfect, but that's just something to point out there. You can open these doors by pulling on these here and they look nice when they're open and they also look nice when they're closed. So either way you really win with that. I think it's fine. It's, you know, just a small thing there with kind of the offset of the doors. It's hard to just get them to line up in a way that you would think they would. Opening up and airing out the set is relatively simple. You have basically four main sections of the set. You have this, you have this, you have this main section with the uh, throne room, and then you have the door area. So all you have to do is really pull this away from the middle area like so. And what's interesting about this, when this set is open like this, it also allows this entire thing to move forward and extend a walkway between the stairs and the door that otherwise isn't there. So you can see when this closes, it grabs that clip there, which doesn't allow that to move. But when you open it, now you can move that whole thing and create a walkway there, which is great. That's something that they actually had on the 2015 version of this set, but brought it back here in this one. So with that like so, you can open up the doors and you just have way more space to work with between the stairs and the actual doorway. There's some nice little hallway lights that they have on the walls here. Those are stickers. We actually also see those elsewhere in the set, which I'll show you in a moment. But yeah, that's kind of sweet looking. Getting into the meat and potatoes of the build though, starting off on the left here, we have the area that the Emperor actually falls down, that little pit there. It's kind of cool to have. And Lego actually did something that I think is ingenious with this build, and I'll show you that in a moment. First off, we have that hallway light sticker. It's a slightly different sticker than the one we saw on the back of the doorway, but still like very similar, obviously. Uh, they do have some nice supports here, kind of holding everything up, making everything look a little bit stronger in that respect. Nothing really going on externally other than kind of the Death Star window there, which looks really nice, and that is a printed piece, something that we have seen before. You can actually drop that down if you want to. No real reason to do that, but it's just kind of like a hidden play feature. There are some decently detailed stickers on the inside of this, and this gives you a good idea of what the Emperor fell down to. And you may notice the black does not cover the entire bottom of the barrel there in this case, and that is for good reason. If I were to drop the Emperor figure down there and he falls down, I'm not gonna be able to, like, that's not a figure you can just reach down and get out because they actually made it so deep. So you can actually just lift the set up and have him fall through the bottom of the set to release him and get him back. So it's a really neat way to do that play feature where you can still have kids drop the figure down, but then you don't have to worry about actually losing the figure in there and having to dig out or take things apart to dig them out. So that's why they left a little hole at the bottom of the build there. Really ingenious. And here's a better, uh, more clean look at a couple of those side panel stickers. A detail that doesn't really need to be there, but they added in there anyway, and I appreciate that. Flipping over to the right side, we have a nice little walkway where you can have Luke and Vader fight. So you can actually have figures stand up here. There is enough space. But what I think is cooler about this space over here, and it is slightly different on the outside there with the window again, same window and everything, same build for that, but just a different little build below it. Um, there's actually a little jumper plate here and you can actually push down on this. It'll push that up and send a figure flying. So what they show is you take Luke Skywalker here, you drop him down on there right in that little spot 
Got a nice little grilled cheese slope there to stop him from going too far. And then you can push up on this and get him to jump up onto the thing. Now, obviously he landed on his back there, but I have only been able to get him to land on his feet once. I do know it's possible that it was like my fifth try. And then I tried like 15 more tries after that and didn't get it. So it's not the easiest thing to do, but it is doable. And I'm actually gonna do it right now until I get it just to show you guys it's possible. I genuinely tried for about 30 minutes to get the Luke to land on it again and I am in disbelief because, like I said, on my fifth try ever, after I had just finished that part of the build, I got him to land perfectly and it was amazing. But uh, yeah, I literally tried for 30 minutes, couldn't get it to work. I would say the chances of you getting it to work are extremely unlikely. However, I invite you to try. When you get this said, give it a shot. Send me a video of you doing it if you do do it. I would love to see that. But I, yeah, I did it once and I just cannot get it to go again. It took me 30 minutes of trying and got no results out of that. So I would say it's unlikely to get it to land once, let alone twice, three times. If you're ever to get it done three times in a row, I will personally send you a file for his battle bag. You sent me a video that is unedited of it going three times times in a row, bang, 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 I will send you a file for this battle pack, done deal. First person to do that. Anyway, let's get into the main big section of the set here. We'll start with the stairs down here, which are actually really neat. Nice design to the stairs, nice cheese slopes and actual studs there for your characters to stand on. There is a small lever here on the right side, which allows you to blow some stairs up or make them force push them away, whatever you want to do with those. So that's a nice little feature built into the set. You can get those back on there. And you have some nice detailing here with, I love these blue cheese slopes that they've got going on. On, and it's a somewhat repetitive build process for those particular things, but that's how you build things like that. It's just going to be repetitive. That's the nature of the build, but a nice design for those. And they're just kind of low and out of the way. So it still gives you ample room to play with on the top here. The Emperor's Throne is a nice and simple build there with some control panels stickered on. There are some very nice additive panels on the side of the main section that weren't there in the 2015 version. Those are actually what allow these to be stopped at a angle that is symmetric on both sides for those sections and it looks wonderful like that. I'm so glad Lego was able to work that in because that was a problem with the older set that they would be somewhat flimsy flopping around. It still is like this set when you want to move it like everything kind of moves these don't connect there so that's kind of a problem to me but it's not as big of a problem when you can get them to stay in one spot there like that when you push them up against it and don't move the play set. Anyway there's some pretty sick panels showing the Death Star on either side of the Emperor here with some printed panels on the 1x2 tile there. Very nice looking wonderful stickers and it really adds a nice bit to the back end of the playset, which otherwise would have been open here on the previous version and something else kind of cool about these you can actually close these up so when you have the whole playset closed up you can close those up too and i'll show that uh here in a moment but i do want to show the emperor sitting down in his throne his cape has ample room to spread out behind him so you don't have to worry about taking that off but interestingly enough there's actually a place where you're supposed to put the cape if you do want to take it off and that is under here. You can remove this whole top section. You just pull it off like that. And that's a positive and a negative. It's a really cool feature to be able to pull that off and then get at the interior space there, which I'll show you in a moment. But it's also negative because this can fall off rather easily. I've had it fall off, like just tapping into it basically. Like it's somewhat loosely held on there or maybe I didn't put it on strong enough. But either way, like a kid definitely isn't gonna like make sure it's on there. So that could be a problem with this playset for some people. Here's a great shot of the back end of the playset. It's not the most displayable thing. I wouldn't be buying this set to display in your shelves. If you're looking for a displayable Death Star set, go buy the UCS one from 2005. Yeah, it's going to cost you a crap ton more, but this is not a displayable Death Star set. Unless you want to display a set where you have your figures fighting, that's also an option. And then this set would be good for that. But that's just what the back end of the set looks like. I'm going to close everything up here and just like that snaps into place. You close those and you can kind of see how everything kind of squares off nicely in this case. And that's what the Emperor's throne room looks like with him up in there with everything kind of closed off. It's actually a really clean look like that. It's very different than what we see on the uh, previous version of this set. And I quite like it. I think that that's interesting and unique for this particular model. But like I said, you can pull this whole section on the top off just like that. And you actually kind of create this separate little thing that you could potentially play with. Although it's not the most stable thing because the back end of it is higher than the front end of it. So maybe you could build something to hold it on, but you could have this as its own little uh, section for yourself. If you ever feel the need to take the Emperor's cape off, there's this nice little spot to place it onto. We can try to coax that around there. I have somewhat big hands, so it's kind of hard to fit in here with these large panels kind of blocking my, my entry into there, but I'm sure a little kid would have no problem 
at all reaching into here and getting this cape on, just having some trouble with it personally. So there you go, it fits in there rather easily and it's actually a nice spot to keep it and it should keep it somewhat dust free because of the section above it protecting it. And then there's a couple of clips for his lightning. That's really neat as well. Unfortunately, no real spot for his lightsaber per se, but you know, like they saw earlier, there were the clips on the side of the chair. So you could just place it on the side of that, although that's gonna look a little bit awkward and definitely not very very well hidden, but I guess it doesn't really matter to a seven-year-old. It's just not where I would keep it. And then you can place all this back on and above. Maybe the biggest negative about that little feature that they've got going on under there is that it almost feels like there's a lot of empty space too that they could have done more with. Like there's just a lot of space here. I don't know what they could have done, but there just is a lot of space there. It's a fact. And perhaps maybe it would have been even better to push these things a little bit farther forward so they're more easily accessible because like I said, it's hard to reach that far back with these big pillars in the way. This is a really fun and unique set. You get your five figures with Palpatine, Vader, Luke, and a couple Royal Guards, and that's an excellent selection. I think a lot of people are going to be all over that. It would have been nice if they had included another minifigure in this set to kind of set it really apart from the previous version of this set because they are so, so similar. Lego clearly drew a lot of inspiration from that, and that's fine. I actually would love to see them do more of this with other sets, kind of like a Lego Star Wars Legacy type of line. It's possible they could do it in the future, but this is the first of that if that is to continue. I'd love to see something with like Palpatine's arrest. But the real reason I think that this set has been remade and really re-released so soon is because this year, in 2020, what LEGO's been doing is they've been releasing sets for adults. They've got the 18 plus line. They've done a lot of 18 plus stuff for Star Wars and other themes. But I think what this really is centered for is for the newer collectors, even adults. I know this is a play set, but adults are gonna look at this and be like, yo, I can get all these epic original trilogy characters that I love from the movies that I love from episode six specifically in this case. And I think that that's why this set is here right now. I really do, I think that's why. And I think that's fine. I think that's an okay thing. Give people that are new to the hobby a chance to pick something up for cheaper than it would have been on eBay or Bricklink and basically cut out the middleman there for Lego. And I think that's great. So I think this is a great set. I really do. I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. They made some great uh, upgrades from the previous version. And there are some frustrating play features like the jumper thing with Luke. Again, I tried hundreds of times, only got it once. I didn't even film it the one time I got it. So that's really unfortunate, but still really sweet in a lot of other ways. So let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments below. Should they do more remakes slash re-releases like this in the future? What would you like to see? And if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and you can check out my other LEGO Star Wars 2020 set reviews with the end screen now.